just two miles from the fast traffic on Interstate 77 and Highway 421. Life slows down to the pace of a horse and buggy. Hamptonville's home to a New Order Amish community and Shiloh General Store sits in the middle of it. That's part of the experience of coming out here, you know, it's getting away, coming out here where it's quiet and enjoying a sandwich on the porch. While people take a trip for the peace and quiet outside. There's definitely not many dull moments around here. <laughs> Inside, the bakery stays busy, making the homemade sourdough bread for those sandwiches. We mix it and then it has to rise for a few hours. It bakes for about 30 minutes. And as soon as the bread comes out of the oven. Hot from the oven. Oh, it smells so good. It's bagged and put on the shelves to sell. That's so good. Mm. The Graber family also bakes homemade sweets like whoopie pies and cakes five days a week. These are my specialty. Delilah makes cinnamon rolls and sticky buns from scratch every morning, while her brother Mark cuts out homemade fried pies. We have the lemon, peach, cherry, blueberry, and blackberry, so we make several different varieties. Okay, thank you. Their parents also work here along with their five other siblings. Yeah, we're definitely not professionals, but people seem to like it anyway. <laughs> their most popular item, the donuts, are only served on Saturdays. Well, it's too much work to do it every day. It's doing it the hard way, but it's there, there's nothing quite like a homemade donut. Edna Southers waited at the door to make sure she gets those donuts. They are so soft and round and light and fluffy and they just they're just wonderful. And usually there's a line waiting, waiting to come in on Saturday morning for the donuts and we try to have warm ones ready. Sometimes we're sold out by 11 o'clock. They are soft and fluffy and divine. The grapers give credit to really good ingredients made by other Amish communities around the country. There's people here from Pennsylvania, we come from Indiana, and there's some from Ohio here too. And they say they enjoy sharing a taste of Amish life with anyone who stops by. Warm bread every day helps a lot. Here you go, sir. <laughs> Greensboro's newest coffee shop brews up delicious drinks. Special blend is better than Starbucks. But as you walk in the door, look, this bus to blend. You see, it's the service that really makes this place special. The coffee shop that you want to come to because the coffee is amazing, the food is fantastic, and our staff is the icing on the cake. 22 intellectually disabled adults work behind the counter and 18 others volunteer here, including Joe Hughes' 20-year-old daughter. And as she was reaching adulthood, it became more increasingly aware that there's not a lot of options for adults in the workplace environment. In fact, 80% of intellectually disabled adults are not employed. And that's why a group of volunteers started the nonprofit coffee shop. These people are beautiful people and they don't always have opportunities. Mm -hmm. And the community is just cheated of their grace. It does take extra time and effort to train the employees like Megan Sarvelink. I just like um, having a challenge and just getting to try something new. Each employee goes through 80 hours of training with occupational, physical, and speech therapist learning to count money, make coffee, and talk with customers. Have a nice day. Because we feel like we don't want to set them up to fail. It's really important that they feel well trained and they feel confident because then they will flourish. Board members say the extra work is definitely worth it. My heart is overjoyed. I can't even, I see, I, I, every time I walk in the door, I want to cry because seeing the looks on their faces, knowing, knowing for the first time Ever, some of these people have ever received a paycheck. Steven, you're always smiling, huh? Yes, they <laughs> For me, it's so enjoyable to watch them flourish, to see them walk in with pride and be excited. What do you recommend, Ryan? What do you um, like? I like the signature blend coffee. And when I stepped up to the counter to place my order with Ryan Cheshire, I received so much more than just a cup of coffee. Ryan handed me one of their claim cards. It read, cheerful. Because I've seen her on TV and she seems very cheerful. Oh, you're very kind. Thank you for giving me the cheerful one. Wonderful customer. And so you walk out the door with coffee in hand and a smile on your face. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Bye now. Come again. 
Marcus Hood spends his summer days in the city serving up hot dogs. And it's so quick, you walking down the street, you, hey, I got a hot dog, let me get a hot dog. He started Maho Bistro Hot Dog Stand after friends and family kept asking for his secret chili recipe. And what secrets can you share with us about this hot dog chili? Um, that is delicious. <laughs> he says customers come back for these hot dogs because he butters and grills the locally homemade buns and serves them with fresh grilled peppers and onions. Yes, this right here brings everybody to the car. The bun has a crunch to it. Like toast and your chili is really good. But there's one more big difference at this stand. And I mean big. Marcus serves an 11 inch, 22 inch, and even 33 inch hot dog on custom made buns. Actually, we have to do three hot dogs in one because our grill is not big enough. So we put three hot dogs in one, but the bun is normally the 33 inches. And for fun, he challenges his customers to finish the 22 inch in five minutes and the 33 inch in just seven minutes. Actually, it's called the Goliath and it's the if you can beat Goliath, you can beat anything. Only this one man has ever finished the 22 inch in five minutes. It was really hard. First bite, I was full. <laughs> now, Walter Jordan has returned to try to take down the 33 inch Goliath. <laughs> yeah, it gets me prepared, you know. <laughs> While he prepared himself, Marcus made the hot dog. Those aren't small hot dogs. No, these are actually uh, what they call two in ones and you get two hot dogs in one. So that's four hot dogs really you're gonna sit and eat. Four hot dogs. Dang! Finally, time for the challenge. Angel Marrero also joined in for the 22 inch challenge. All right, you guys ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, they're off. Angel had to finish the 22 inch dog plus a bag of chips in five minutes. Are you nervous yeah, for him? I'm, I'm nervous, nervous for him. <laughs> While Walter had to down the whole 33 inch dog in chips in seven minutes. A crowd even gathered to cheer on the two. Keep it going, man. <laughs> Angel gave it a great effort, finishing almost all of it. How close? Maybe a hot dog away. And two minutes later. Four, three, two, <laughs> Walter went down to the wire too. Now I probably won't eat another hot dog this whole summer. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it was really good. Sweet Old Bills brings more than traditional North Carolina barbecue to the table. You can go to about any town in North Carolina, to about any corner, and you can get barbecue. Um, so we knew we had to stand out and do something a little bit different. Man cannot live by pulled pork alone. Of course, you can still order pulled pork cooked over hickory here, but they also serve slow smoked Texas brisket and St. Louis style ribs. And we also have a smoked chicken that is a very big hit here um, that we serve with an Alabama white sauce. So we've drawn from a lot of different regions as far as the barbecue parts go. And that's just the meat. The tomato pie comes piled high with cheese. That's delicious. I love the cheese with them. And the most popular appetizer on the menu, deep fried deviled eggs. Everybody's curious to try this. It's one of our uh, more popular appetizer items. A little dot of our blueberry compote on each one. That's good. It really is even with the blueberry on it. I didn't think I would like the blueberry on it, but it's good. I don't think I would like it without the blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> the chef rolls the deviled eggs in panko breadcrumbs and drops them in the fryer for just a few minutes. Oh, everything's already cooked, so the biggest thing is you're trying to make the outside nice and crispy. We watched him make their big brisket nachos too, topped with everything from queso and smoked corn salsa to cilantro lime crema and of course, brisket. And that's a showstopper here. Owner Bill Hurd just opened the restaurant on Main Street last November. It's been beyond expectations. For lunch and dinner, people pack both the restaurant and the bar. I always wanted to have a barbecue restaurant, but what was always frustrating in North Carolina was that 99% of the places that served good barbecue were very 
old school, more importantly, they didn't have a bar. Bill admits sitting next to the award-winning Brown Truck Brewery helps to bring people to this once empty block. Yeah, we're right around in here. Hurd's happy with the fast success for his hometown and he believes his father would be proud too. He named the restaurant after him. He used to have these business cards that said, sweet old Bill. And they're at the bottom, but more often they use the initials. Initials being? Um, well, you, you know, you can, you, you can, you can do that. So. <laughs> Just another unexpected surprise at Sweet Old Bill's. In the South, tea is served sweet and on ice, except at this spot. The Flower Box is a traditional English tea room tucked along the cobblestone streets in Old Salem. Do you want to try it with a little bit of meal? Sure. Mila Ranieri opened the quaint cafe three years ago, inspired by a trip to England. It's a um, more social time um, while you have an English tea, so you are not connected to your cell phone or computer. So it's a quality spending time with your friend or family. The tea comes in a variety of flavors, from the lighter Earl Grey to stronger English breakfast. Customers sip out of beautiful china teacups while enjoying three tiers of elegant snacks. Chicken salad on croissant. Mm -hmm. On the bottom tier, Mila serves savory finger sandwiches. Then on the second plate, her specialty. English scones, a recipe she developed and makes from scratch every day. Mmm, kind of a biscuit, but it's different. It's supposed to be crunchy outside and very soft inside. That's the real scone. And biscuit is more soft outside and inside. And finally on top, tiny bite-sized gourmet desserts, like these baby brownies and cute cheesecakes. The little bites of everything. Exactly. But after you eat three savory sandwiches, your scone and desserts. It's like a meal. Mila says when she first opened the flower box, it took time to convince some of her southern customers to try hot tea. You know, North Carolina is a sweet tea belt mm -hmm. with the ice and sugar, so <laughs> it was a little crazy. Slowly, more and more customers tried the tea, and those English scones in Mila's tea room took off. I think so. Every time people come in for tea service, I think they feel special. The flower box is really one of the best places in Winston-Salem, um, not only for the food itself, but for the experience. Mila is celebrating the success of the flower box. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Do you cheers to tea? Just for you. <laughs> and she's expanding, opening a bigger tea room in the historic Schaffner House in downtown Winston-Salem, where even more people can try this tradition of tea. It's my joy to see two people or three people sharing tea and having a conversation instead of engaging in their cell phone or laptop. That's such a blessing. 